Hello, I'm Dr. Jazeer, the Dermatology faculty. So a few days ago, we had this uh, INICET November session. Hope the exam went well. So in this short video, we will quickly discuss some of the recall questions from Dermatology. Now let's see the first question. Which drug is not used for the given image? So what can you see in this image is an image of acne vulgaris that to a nodulocystic type. You can see big lesions in this image isn't it now look at the options in the options the it is given as uh, topical flucinolone uh, topical tazerotene topical clindamycin and benzyl peroxide so out of all these options which is the odd one out which we do not use in acne vulgaris so the right answer here would be topical flucinolone why topical flucinolone because it is a steroid so if you start using steroids for the acne vulgaris lesions then it is more likely that the acne may get flared up so steroids are usually not used in the management of acne vulgaris so that is all about the first question now let's see the second question that is a child presented with asymptomatic lesion over the dorsum of the arms and also over the shaft of the penis now what is the diagnosis now you can see this image what do you find you see multiple tiny bumps over the skin isn't it so that too in a child so this is an asymptomatic uh, presentation the child where you get multiple tiny papules and this is called as lichen nitidus so the right answer here would be lichen nitidus this is once again a pretty much direct question that has come this time so now let's see the next question now this question is from the chapter of vesiculobullous diseases now what is the question a 65 year old male comes with a tense bulla now this bulla is present on an urticarial base now the roof of the bulla has settled after a while what is the diagnosis so which means the patient has presented to you with a tense bulla the, the moment you know about a tense bulla you know that the bulla is originating from the deeper layers of the skin the second uh, hint that you have here is the roof of the bulla has settled by its own so what are the options just like uh, usual questions from vesiculobullous disease the options are bullous pemphigoid dermatitis herpetiformis pemphigus vulgaris and iga pemphigus so pemphigus is a superficial vesiculobullous disease where you get a flaccid bulla which means pemphigus vulgaris and pemphigus foliaceus you expect a flaccid bulla Tense bulla means the, the bulla is being originated from deeper part of the skin which means subepidermal bulla which is seen in bullous pemphigoid. So the right answer here would be bullous pemphigoid. <coughs> now going to the next question, an individual developed these kind of a linear lesions over the hands following a trauma which is a vegetative matter. So what is a causative agent here? So what do you see in this image? You can see that there are multiple skin lesions that is present over the forearm and then these lesions are present in a linear fashion. So when you see any lesion as such and if the patient is having a traumatic history, for example, it can be a rose thorn prick, isn't it? So in such cases, what is the likely diagnosis? The likely diagnosis is a deep fungal infection called as sporotrichosis this is also called as rose gardener's disease so in rose gardener's disease or sporotrichosis what happens due to the traumatic implantation of the fungus this fungus tend to evade the lymphatics and once it moves along the lymphatics you will be able to see a linear pattern this pattern is also called as a sporotrichoid pattern so the right answer here would be sporostrix shenkai which is the causative organism in this case now let's see the next case that this is a much easy question which you can expect in an exam like INICET because they have asked to you very straight. What is the question? A patient came with vesicular lesions over a single dermatome over the chest and he also complains of pain. What is the diagnosis? So it's a pretty easy question. You have a unilateral lesion. The, the lesion does not cross the midline. The lesions are vesicular in nature which is having an erythematous background. The patient complains of pain. So this is a reactivation of the varicella virus. And what is the condition called as? The condition is called as herpes zoster. So this is herpes zoster. Now going to the next question. A man from Bihar presented with these kind of lesions over the face. So the 
the patient gives you a childhood history of prolonged fever so there was no hypoanesthesia and nerve thickening so what is the diagnosis so this has multiple points in this question the first thing is the patient comes from bihar which means we have to think about some disease which may be endemic in bihar the second thing is the patient complains of a prolonged fever in childhood so childhood fever but now the patient is an adult now the third important thing is there is no hypoanesthesia or nerve thickening so what two diseases come to your mind in such a scenario the two important differential diagnoses would be lepromatous leprosy and post kala azar dermal leishmaniasis now is it lepromatous leprosy or pkdl how do you differentiate if it was lepromatous leprosy the patient would be having hypoanesthesia the patient would may present to you with a nerve thickening so both of these uh, findings are not present so why did the examiner say that there is a history of a prolonged fever in childhood because that was kala azar and after several years down the line the patient develops a sequelae or a complication of kala azar which is called as post kala azar dermal leishmaniasis so the right answer here would be pkdl so now going to the next question this was a spotter so they just asked you which drug may be responsible for this findings over the face now what do you find in this um, image the normal skin of the patient is now changed the patient is having a slate gray color of the skin over the face so you can either call it as a slate gray color or a blue color up to the skin so out of all these options which drug may cause a slate gray pigmentation the right answer here would be amiodarone so amiodarone causes this kind of a pigmentation over the face so now let's see the next one so which is the diagnostic microscopic feature of langerhans cell histiocytosis now this is a tumor isn't it langerhans cell histiocytosis so this is a tumor of langerhans cell so where is this langerhans cell present the langerhans cells are present in the epidermis to be very specific it is present over the stratum spinosum so if you do an electron microscopy of the langerhans cells what do you find you would be able to see a birbeck granules so what is the peculiarity of this birbeck granule these birbeck granules may be having a tennis racket shaped isn't it so this is called as birbeck granules typical for langerhans cells now let's see the next question a 9 year old girl had a bee sting after which she felt a breathing difficulty and a sudden fall in bp this scenario is mediated by which of the following immunoglobulin is it ige igg iga or igm so what is the answer so this is a 9 year old child she had a bee sting so immediately after getting a bee sting if the patient goes into hypotension if the patient complains of breathing difficulty this indicates anaphylaxis isn't it so what is the mediator for anaphylaxis this is going to be type 1 or this is going to be ige so this is the right answer for this question so thank you for watching i hope you find this video helpful so thank you again